Hey everybody, it's me again, Kale. Here once more playing Tales of Arise. Last time we left off, well, managed to get into the Forbidden Zone, but Faria was here waiting for us. Being manipulated by the Red Woman, most likely. I mean, she did see her after we left, so... Stands to reason. She also had a core emitting dark astral energy, so that also... Well, core-like object, it... Didn't quite have the same power, but it was enough to summon shit, which is not great. Um, and now we're going deeper into the Forbidden Zone. What is it, Rinwell? Do you hear something again? Yeah. You are our mage. It's that voice. The will of Dana's astral energy. Well, oh, it's back. Sorry, I'm having an echo flash. Uh... Is this the ceremony? And why does it look like it's in the wedge? What? There's so much astral energy. But where's it all coming from? It's almost like... it's alive. Some dope particle effects, but fuck! That was the spirit channeling ceremony just now. No, it was more than that. What the hell was that? It felt like everything was on the brink of... Like the whole world was seconds from... Oblivion. It's the same vision as the one my thorns show me. A vision of impenetrable darkness that swallows up us and everything else. An empty void. A nothing so complete and dominating that there aren't even words to describe it. The end of time. Oh shit. The visions of the apocalypse you've been seeing. If I'd known how bad they were, I... So, everything we just saw, those were Naori's memories, right? Mm. That's right. It was as if her innermost thoughts were speaking directly to us. I don't think. At least I know they weren't mine. That power flowing into her, it reminds me of Xion's thorns. If they're what's responsible for all these visions she's been having, then maybe... Maybe my thorns are made from that same astral energy? That's my guess. If that is the case, we just found the missing link between your thorns and what happened here three centuries yeah, ago. Yeah, it's whatever sentience no, is behind dark astral energy. Link, perhaps even the very heart of the matter. I've never felt astral energy so powerful. 
What was that? If it's the same energy your thorns are made of, it must be dark astral energy, right? And isn't that something only Renans have? Correct. Dark astral energy is possessed by Renans alone. And when enough astral energy gathers together, it develops its own form of sentience. If so, maybe that complete oblivion is exactly what the Renan astral energy's will is wishing for. But why? I don't know. Will can be a pretty vague thing to nail down. It's true. It's more of a feeling, just like the will of Dana. But the will of Dana is made up of astral energy too, right? And if that's what's been showing us these visions... I don't know, should we really be getting so involved with this thing? Dana's will would never want oblivion! But you can't say that for sure! Cut it out, you two. Squabbling over theories will get us nowhere. No fighting <laughs> over the hypothetical. Let's keep moving. We only fight on the practical, okay? <laughs> if it's Dana's will showing us these memories, then I'm as clueless about its motives as any one of us. But if it could lead us to the truth, then I want to find out more. Shion's right. All we can do is keep going. If these really are Naori's memories we're watching, we will get to the root of this, and I then we'll decide what to do. Of. Okay? And I think That's what we do we may be the kinds of truth I need to confront if we're going to keep fighting. Oh yeah, buddy. I'm sorry about what I said earlier. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I feel bad. Dolim's the only person who doesn't have something to fancy understand on. what the thorns are. Yes, and their source. A ceremony that occurred three centuries ago. But we still don't know how to get rid of them. I just hope we can find a way. Hold on, before we watch this skit. Those guys farmer hats, that's unfortunate. Um... Uh, do I have a zoom button? Uh, there we go. Sunglasses are pretty impenetrable, not gonna lie. God, they look good on him. With a monocle. And... One of the corsages were like on the lapel or something. That'd be nice. A bit big. Honestly, I think just the monocle. Just the monocle. Simple, elegant, it it reeks of style. Alright. That vision we saw. It was as if it was meant specifically for us. What do you make of it? Do you still think the will of Dana might be involved somehow? Maybe it's trying to tell us something. But what? Well, it could be supernatural. You know, like seeing dead people, messages from beyond the grave, ghost type stuff. That that's your grand theory? That we're being haunted? Come on, Law. Wait. He might be closer to the mark than you think. Am I bait? <laughs> what if a person's thoughts and deeds were to somehow become indelibly etched into the ether of a place? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. And what if those with a connection could then somehow pick up on them? You think that it was? might be guiding Some us. Some kind of message someone left here for us? I am merely entertaining the possibility. Whether it was Dana's will, or somehow connected to the Sovereign and Maiden's powers, I do not know. Okay, back up a sec. You're saying that if a place is full of enough astral energy, it can somehow show us events that happened centuries ago? More to the point, maybe. how does that much astral energy gather in one place anyway? Seems unlikely it happened naturally. Whatever it was, it survived here Ooh, intact so for 300 years. Whoever left it for us, he is the strength condescending of their intent is so beyond hard. doubt. The strength of their intent. 
Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh. Okay, that was intentional. I was starting to worry. I was going on a bit long. Soon, you might very well learn the truth behind Shion's thorns. As well as my own past. I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens. Oh shit, are you giving me a, a point of no return warning? I just need a little time first. Like how... How point of no returny is this? Like... On a scale... <laughs> on a scale of... Of... Of one to the, the bottom of the the, the... the crater in Final Fantasy VII. Like, what are we talking here? <laughs> well... Just gonna go ahead and uh, make an extra save. Oh wait, no, there's gotta be more. There has to be more. Because Shion and Elfin aren't wearing their their lore, their their sovereign and maiden duds yet. And that was featured in the season two opener. So there's gotta be more. Let's right, go. We're fine. Soon. Oh wait. Ready to face anything. I just need I do realize though, we are injured. <laughs> And I'd like to think they wouldn't throw me into another boss fight without healing, but I also can't be 100% certain. They could try and fuck me up, fam. Hopefully this will restore that, uh, that, that healing circle. It did not. And there is no way to fast travel back here. Yeah, I'm pretty lazy. <sighs> it's better not destroy Lenigus. I'm gonna be real upset if Lenigus blows up because of this. You know, unless we can get some survivors out. You know, at least Dolholim's friends. All right. Let's get this truth underway. Soon, we might very well learn the truth behind ship. I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens, I'm determined to save Shion and Dana. Nothing I learn can change that. Here we go, lads. To the end of Act 2. I think. I don't know. But at this point, man, your guess is as good as mine. Wait a minute. Hold up, you guys. What is it? I want to look through that room over there. This is where we'll Elfin was That's being the room held. You visited in your past, right? Sure, we can check it out. Yeah, this is where the sovereign experiments were going on. This looks like some kind of research facility. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Fair. It's pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. Alright, everybody, spread out and see if you can't find research data. 
The Forbidden Zone. For the people of Lenegas, the Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this yeah. whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. Fair. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority. Grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. God, he looks that so... We believed this place to he be. looks so officious no, with that thing on. But we were made to believe it was. But now, it is finally time... God, that fits him so well! True purpose. Good choice. And why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. Best, best aesthetic choice I've ever made. <laughs> Oh, should this have a touch screen? Hmm. I think I can make this work. It's Astral Arts activated. Got it. Even cooler. Well, can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records by the looks of it. Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Dan and Astral energy so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. The creation of a governing central figure taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Taking the form of a Danon? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master course. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. The Lords' crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. Yeah. Not I'm to the mention same the fact that the contenders wavelength. to the Crown are selected from otherwise regular Renan citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renans are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of grand scheme. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I've found one that was successful. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alphen. <sighs> yep. Not that shocking. They've re-engineered me. Right here in this lab. Alfin. It's fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name... Volron. Volron? But that means... He's only sovereign because oh. someone made him that way, too. And he's also... He's the oh, last no. one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. He's a lot further down the list. Excessively so. <laughs> But what about the winners of the crown contests? 
Does this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? Upon victory, the sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new sovereign is decided, the outgoing monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two sovereigns, neither of whom had anything to do with the crown contest. Just how much it's all lies, automated. Including the part about the sovereign residing in Rena. The crown contest was never about deciding a new ruler. It must always have been devised for some other purpose. But even supposing that's true, someone must have been in charge for the past three centuries, right? If it wasn't the Sovereign, then who was it? Crown contests have been held this whole time, in spite of the fact that there was already a Sovereign. Me. Meaning that for the past 300 years, someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. The same person who's behind the Red Woman. The Red Woman? If there is someone behind the Red Woman. It's possible. But that doesn't mm. necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. Glad no Xion's on my side. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. Either way, it's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. Yeah, she's higher echelon, that's for sure. What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this, or what their end game is. Yeah, this unfortunately. is just data. I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can while we're here. Cool. I love data mining. I'll do that. It's totally something I'm good at. So this is where Alfin became the Sovereign, and Volron as well. The significance of this location would suggest... Hey, it looks like the terminals in here turned on too. We should look through them. They might contain valuable information. Agreed. Only two Sovereigns in over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> Forgive me. Alfin. I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already. So it's not like it's a surprise or anything. It's just re-uploading all this shock. Strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it just to have someone to blame if that were to happen then i no then we'd help you fight it before you ever got that far <sighs> wouldn't we everyone yeah we wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control oh, yeah that's right no good can come from being consumed by hatred if you ever start to lose your way you can count on us to guide you back to remind you where home is and I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I think I'll be okay now. Hell yeah, buddy. You've got good friends! Sovereign Axe is Lenegas' central control device. The spirit channeling ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Denon subject serves as the base of its creation. In theory, ideal candidates possess equal affinity for every astral element. However, such aptitude is statistically rare to uncover within real-world conditions. As a result, both subjects die during the adjustment period to instability is still not guaranteed for those who survive. This instability, coupled with the Sovereign's powers of astral manipulation, pose a high risk to the security of Lenegas 
if left unchecked. As such, stabilization measures must be put in place via the support mechanism when utilizing the Sovereign in the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Addendum 1. No effective alternate methods to perform the ceremony have been found. Trials on Danon subjects are authorized to continue. Addendum 2. Unit 2 adjustments are a success. Subsequent adjustments are to be put on hold while extended observation takes place. The Maiden acts as the Sovereign's support mechanism for the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Renin subject serves its functions, providing the Sovereign with a supplemental Dark Astral it lacks in tandem with the Renis Alma. During the ceremony, it is partly responsible for astral energy conversion, as well as maintaining stability over the Sovereign's own powers. Additionally, the degree of intimacy between it and the Sovereign has been observed to positively impact oh god damn it a level of stability in both subjects. Because of this, trial activations of the Sovereign without the Maiden present are expressly forbidden. Furthermore, neither the Sovereign nor the Maiden are to be informed about the details of the Spirit Channeling panel plan. Addendum 1. Mental instability in the Maiden has been deemed to cause the past Sovereign's rampancy. That's a word. Countermeasures must be considered. Addendum 2. In line with plan adjustments, current subject will have its maiden registration revoked to return to its original household. That's what happened to her. <laughs> Damn big cables. Trying to hide the truth from me. Ooh, the sedative mask. Okay. A device covering the wearer's whole face that restricts their mental activity. It was developed for the purpose of pacifying prisoners. Medical applications are also recognized, particularly as a means of preventing patients from sustaining mental trauma. However, doing so is not recommended as prolonged use of the device carries the risk of inducing a number of adverse side effects. Addendum. Due to loss of production facilities incurred from the partial destruction of Lenigus, additional devices will no longer be manufactured. Brainwashing re Oh, no. After receiving reports of a robust new form of rule emerging in Dana's water... A study was commissioned to investigate the matter in depth. The system is unique in that it elevates only the Lord as the supreme authority, while relegating both Renans and Danans alike to enslavement. As subject 10105, serves as the realm's current Lord, and has achieved this without the use of any special powers, drugs, or special devices. Rather, it has done so by sheer governance. Given this method's effectiveness, at population control, monitoring the situation will continue. Addendum 1. Collapse of cognitive faculties via extreme mental repression rooted in violence and fear has proven to be the key to the style of rule. Once a subject loses its autonomy, become desensitized to fear, and subsequently cease to prioritize even their own personal safety. But such a state is ill-suited for commanding officers. It remains an effective way to cultivate disposable infantry and slaves for manual labor. Fucking hell. Addendum 2. Soldiers in Lenigus who have undergone this treatment will be asked to secure classified sectors as, as a trial. The results will be monitored. Hate that! Off the topic to explore. Lenicus! A large scale astral energy converter that primarily converts the elemental composition of Dana's astral energy and transmits it to Rena. Activation and control of astral energy conversion is achieved by placing the Sovereign, Maiden, 
and the Renis Alma within the central core of Lenegas. It is comprised of classified and essential personnel residence zones around a large conduit, along with a defensive layer surrounding them. This outer layer is deployed upon activation, unlocking the central conduit while simultaneously functioning as a stabilization mechanism. Due to its design, deployment of the outer layer is expected to cause damage to residential zones. However, as that only takes place during the final stage of the spirit channeling ceremony, no contingency plan to address said damage is needed. Till that phase, Lenegas serves as the central base of operations for the management and execution of the Crown Contest on Dana. Warning. All personnel with level 3 authority or lower is strictly forbidden from the classified zone. Any violators will be immediately executed. Woof. A massive spirit vessel placed on Dana the spirit channeling ceremony. It serves as the tip of Lenegas' conduit from which it separates. Upon landing on Dan and Waters, in Dan and Waters, it extends two sets of conducting pathways. The vertical pathways connect to the center of Dana. Meanwhile, the horizontal pathways proceed to envelop the entire surface of Dana. Once activated, it links the biological spirit vessels placed in each realm, efficiently harvesting the planet's astral energy and mass. To accumulate energy, the accumulated energy is then transmitted to Rena via Lenegas. Because construction and adjustment take place in the Forbidden Zone, Forbidden Zone's regulator area, Lenegas's outer layer must be deployed prior to launch. Intended to function semi-autonomously, only, maintain, only maintenance per personnel are expected to manually interface with it when necessary. No other personnel is required for its function. Addendum 1. Attachable Harvester 1 was lost on Dana after exploding due to the rampancy exhibited by the Sovereign. Addendum 2. Attachable Harvester 2's landing point remained the same as that of the previous model. This is due to the explosion of the previous model, which altered the planetary topography, enabling easier connection to the center of Dana. Ah. So when the first wedge went down, it essentially acted as the catalyst for all of the strange topography of the world. Interesting. Master cores are instruments of power containing astral instruments of power containing astral energy that belongs to one of the six elements. Five of these master cores, those with earth, water, fire, wind, and light, are loaned to Renan Lords at the time of the Crown Contest. Only the Dark Master Core is maintained inside the Forbidden Zone until the Renis Alma is ready to be reformed, its existence kept top secret. Underneath the Master Core's spherical outer layer is a force field crystal used for the purpose of astral energy containment and stabilization. Inside the force field, astral energy is stored in a dormant state. For the duration of, the, of, its, of their tenure, each lord competes in the crown contest to amass their allotted type of astral energy. In the event of an emergency, each lord may be allowed to withdraw from their respective stock of astral energy as necessary. However, the extent allowed is determined based on their own individual strength. Then in one, design flaws have been discovered in how the Renis Alma mater materializes. Be advised that active master cores may resonate with other master cores located in close proximity and become unstable. Addendum 2. With the successful regeneration of the Renis Alma, Master Cores will cease to be deployed. The Crown Contest will be permanently halted. Interesting. Spirit Cores are end terminals used... I'm sorry, by the way. This cannot be the most entertaining thing in the world. But it's necessary. I want that sweet, juicy lore. Spirit cores are end terminals used for the collection of astral energy. When embedded in biological subject, it establishes connections throughout its body. These connections are used to amass astral energy, 
generated from physical activity, which is then emitted from the host body itself. Fair. Because this emitted energy is prone to diffuse, host must be placed within range of a spirit vessel for the energy to be collected. This means that Danons must be employed to harvest the astral energy for the purpose of the crown contest. Given the difficulty in producing them, it is advised that spirit cores be retrieved from host bodies and reused upon their death. Spirit cores can also be embedded in zoogles to control them via astral arts. Addendum. Increased physical load on the host on a host body tends to produce increased astral energy emissions. Final confirmation of ideal workload to impose on host bodies without inducing death where maximum astral energy yields is still pending. I hate this. Get to that one in a second. Each crown, each crown contest, five of the best qualified members of the Renan populace are chosen to act as lords, vying to serve as the next sovereign. During their tenure, they are granted level three authority, as well as one of the five elemental realms to administer. That's corresponding master core. They are also assigned an ID crest, indicating their designated element. The selection process is based only on astral artistry and physical and mental aptitude. Other variables, such as age, have no bearing whatsoever. As only the strongest go on to become lords, the position itself does not inherently make an individual any stronger. It should be noted, however, that lords are not the only individuals capable of drawing out a master course power. All Renans must take part in the selection process, and acceptance of the position is mandatory. It is not allowed for those deemed suitable to decline. Furthermore, in the event that an acting lord is incapacitated and can no longer serve their position, the placement must be quickly prepared. Alright. Unique Adjustment Index Test Subject Report. The following is a report on the second successful case of Sovereign Test Subject Experimentation. Test Subject 101105. Given name, Volron. Generation, NA. Unique Adjustment Index, Ethnicity, NA. Although subject possesses high latent potential, it exhibits significant mental instability, along with a strong distaste for following orders. That yeah, sounds like him. As such, the risk it poses surpass even those of the last successful subject, itself a failure. And is therefore under consideration for disposal. Addendum. This is the first successful case in 300 years. Previously mentioned risk factors are now mitigated due to established control protocols. Subject is to be evaluated under the assumption that Plan 2 will proceed and will be dispatched on Dana under the guise of serving as a lord. Did you follow all that? Brain! I got the big brain! Uh... Alright. Hopefully somebody else will talk for a while. My mouth is dry. Hey, life bottles! The room is unchanged over three centuries. Oof, that's haunting. Any other data? Anything else for me to read? No. Oh, wait, hold on. Equipment for monitoring subjects. Probably had a failure disposal mechanism as well. Let's not think about that. Oh, wait, hold on. Great gel! Oink. Lots of numbers. Looks like logs of alignment between subjects and Linux proper. This area will now be shut down as the project proceeds to the final phase. Oh, that's probably not great.
What is going on on Rena? Fuck's sake. Ah! Not again! Or again, that's fine. Mayori, I... I... Don't talk. I have to do this. I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. What's I'm sorry for what you've endured. Rena never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. But... The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Oh, you have no idea. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. Mayori. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. Man, how long-term? The chance of surviving hibernation is less than 10%? And worse, long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. It's fine. But... Uh, if I don't head back, Lenigus will be nothing but ashes. And this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. But if... If doing this will grant you even the slightest chance, I have to try. Aww. I hope it's enough. It's the only answer she had. Dangerous or not. Please, live for me, Alfin. Oh, it's the sad music again. That vision. It must have been from when Naori helped Alfin escape Lenigus. She sure went above and beyond the call of duty. Even with Lenigus crumbling down around her, she chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain. And why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. She didn't have much of a choice. Yeah. Things could have been far worse for, for you. I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. More than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Make it a part of your own, friend. Naori was the one who put that mask on me. It made me Iron Mask. She did it to prevent your soul from tearing itself apart. She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did. You did good, Elfin. You did good. How long has this episode been with all that exposition? I kinda lost track. Um... Let's see behind this teleporter. Actually, that could be a bad idea. Oh god, how long was all that? Ah, you know what? It's fine. I need to hurry up and get on with my fifth episode for the day because, again, I lost so many episodes. I'm gonna call it here. Might be a short boy, but it's exposition, the episode. Um, <laughs> hope you all enjoyed, whatever the fuck that was. And if you did, let me know down below, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll come back next time and.
Well, I'm not gonna stop until the until the final shoe drops. So until then, you all have yourselves a fabulous day. I'll see you in the next adventure. Later. <laughs>